the Mamo Afisha Power. This is Joanna from After Village Kitchen. Welcome. So today I want to give you some tips on how to have a stress-free Christmas day. Yes, during this time we are also happy, organizing, looking forward to see our friends and family on Christmas day, trying to cook one or two, a little bit of this, organizing gifts, etc. By the end of the day, when we, if we are not careful, we find that on that day, we are so stressed, stressed with all the organization, trying to cook the dinner, the dinner is not on time, people are hungry, and things don't, don't go well, they don't go as planned. So, for me, I mean, I've gone through this over and over again. Sometimes I think, oh, I'm having a small dinner just for me and my family. It can be that hard, can it? So, you know, I get very relaxed, eating after the day. And on the day, I find myself, oh my goodness, I forgot to buy this, I forgot to buy that. And yeah, my Christmas dinner is way too late and everybody's hungry. So, over the years, I have found some tips that really help me. When I put them in place, I find that I have a stress-free day and I get so much done my wild mind. So I'm going to share with you some tips on how to have a stress-free Christmas day. So, first of all, you need to plan the menu for the day. How do you plan the menu for the day? One, you need to know the number of people being hosted. The type of crowd being hosted. Oh, of course. You need to know that your friends and family, those who are coming, are they traditionalists? Are they adventurous foodies? Are they willing to try the new recipes you found during the, the year? Or they just want to stick to the same old jollof rice and fufu and light soup? <laughs> yeah, I have friends like that. You know, days, Christmas days when I'm having friends together, that's when I want to show all the new recipes that I've created and I'm just so happy to share it with them. But it doesn't always go that way because some people just want to have what they want to have. They same old jollof rice, the same old jollof rice they eat at home. So when you're planning your menu, have this in mind because you don't want to be cooking for no one to eat. You want everyone to be happy and well fed. So the next thing to think about is the mix, the mix of um, people you are hosting. How many adults? How many children? Are there any any children at all? What are their, their maybe fussy eaters, you know, with children? What are their preferences? Sometimes I go to parties and you know children love jollof rice, right? Even if they will not eat anything, they may try a bit of jollof rice. But then you find this jollof rice being so spicy. Oh my goodness, maybe the adults are finding it difficult to, to, to contain the heat. So how much more the kids, right? So if you are, you have to know your mix. Are you having loads of adults, loads of kids, a good mix? 
cater for them okay cater for them if you're having kids make sure you have lots of finger foods for them because on that day trust me they don't want to sit down and eat a proper food even when they sit down to eat a proper food they will just be a little bit okay they may be want, wanting to snack a lot so make sure the snacks and finger foods flow right the next thing is to find out if there are any dietary requirements right because you don't want to have someone come and then they, can, they don't eat chicken or they are vegetarian and you have no other option for them so know the dietary requirements of your guests right and provide for them now the next thing to think about is what you want to cook on that day, your menu, okay? Once you have thought about the, the, your guests, the number, um, what, what are their likes, are they foodies, are they adventurers, or they want to stick to the same old, same old, draw up a menu for the day, okay? Think about it. Do you want to have a name? Again, it all depends on your guests. Are they the people who want to have their banku? I don't go stream and you know, just find somewhere in the corner and relax. Or, you know, they are willing to have a bit of canapes and a bit of light meal as main. So think about it and create your menu around that. The next thing is, how was the selection if you're having canapes? Are you having a wide selection of canapes? Um, the selection of main? Are you having a wide selection of main? My tip here is, do not have both. Do not have a wide selection of canapes and a wide selection of mains at the same time. If you're having a wide selection of mains for the main course, cut down on your canapes or your finger foods, okay, or appetizers. You don't want them to fill up with those and then you find out that they can't eat the main course, okay. So have it healthy and health, maybe um, just um, a few bits of one or two mains, selection of mains and a whole lot of um, canapes so that or appetizers so that they can eat as much think about you know how full before they have the meal alright the next thing is your budget you can't have anything or you can't really have a big menu when you have a small budget alright and you when you have when you have a big budget if you don't plan properly you just build it back up and not even have any proper selection so think about your budget and work around it, okay? Once you have found the number of people, your, the menu you want to serve, your budget now speaks, okay? With, when you plan early, no matter your budget, you can still present something very, very nice and presentable. It's all about planning. Jingle bells chime and jingle bell time Dancing and prancing in Jingle Bell Square In the frosty air that's the right time So, now that you have planned your menu, you need to create a shopping list from the menu. So many times I have um, thought, oh, I've got everything in my head. I'll be able to remember everything and you go to the shop and with all that bula bula in the shops yeah, you come back home with lots missing okay and that also creates a lot of stress so the best thing is to create a shop list from the menu in that way too it helps you to keep to your list, right? Like me, if you're like me, I go to the shops, I find a deal going on, I get distracted so easily. And I'm thinking, I'm creating recipes as I shop. And um, yeah, that's not best. That's not the best way, okay? So how, once you have your shopping list, you know you're going to go 
bite, okay, and you have something, you, you tell yourself, that is what I'm getting. If I'm getting anything extra, that is after I have bought everything on the shopping list. So, so how do you create a shopping list? Because sometimes it can be really daunting. Well, how do you know that there are many? You know that maybe you're serving turkey, you're serving potato salad, you're serving jollof rice, you're serving some um, trophy, some turkey too, or some fried yam. Yes. So for your fried yam, or let's say you're serving kinky and fish and tilapia, you know some the fried tilapia, grilled tilapia. Of course you would need the kinky, you will need some tomatoes, onions, pepper, um, ginger. So you need to put that on your list. So to create your shopping list, you know your menu, you know what you are creating. Okay, so you say, I've got kinky and fish. So kinky and fish, I need kinky. I need tomatoes for my meal. I need pepper. I need ginger. I need um, the fish, the tilapia, you can have cake and fish or and there's no fish. So with what with the menu you have in mind, you just list them. And then for each menu item on the menu, you list the ingredients that's needed. Okay? Sometimes the best thing to do is to go to the recipe. Let's say you're cooking a recipe from after the village kitchen. Okay, you saw one of my fantastic recipes and you want to create something from it. Well, you need to get the recipe and then look at the list of ingredients and write that ingredients down. Alright? Once you have that in place, you can start grouping things, items which are common to different um, I mean ingredients which are common to different menu items, okay? So let's say you're cooking soup and you're cooking jello fries. Both you need tomatoes. So group tomatoes together, group onions together, group fish together, chicken together. But remember to put the quantities that you need. Work out the quantities that you need and put it next to the ingredients, then quantities, okay? You don't want to go and you, you just root down onions. And then you're thinking, how many, how much do I need? How many do I need, need to buy? One, two, you're not sure. If the recipe calls for three, recipe one calls for three, recipe two calls for two or five, add them up and say, total number of onions that you need is maybe five. Okay. That way you are covered. Okay. If you're shop, if you like, baggies, acne. Yes, I don't want, I don't know what they call people like me. Shopaholics who buy on, <laughs> who love deals, yes. They say well, I shop for my clothing, I shop for food and that way. So I've got, I don't shop from one supermarket, I shop from different places. And sometimes with our African food, Ghanaian food, we can't get all the ingredients in the mainstream shop. So you have to go to the mainstream shop, shop for one thing, or and then go to your Ghana shop for the next thing, okay? So what I do to make life easy for me is to group um, ingredients by shop as well. So let's say I'm going to Sainsbury's. From Sainsbury's, I'm going to buy my cake stuff, my baking stuff, so flour, self-raising um, flour, baking powder, raisins, etc. I know I'm getting it from Sainsbury's. Or maybe I'm going to Lidl's and I love getting my chicken from Lidl's. So I've got chicken and a Lidl. And I'm going to my Ghanaian shop down in Lichabi, Manos Grocery. And I know I need to get chicken, I need to get my palm nuts puree. So I've got that listed by shop. Once I'm in the shop as well, I'm able to cross them out once I get the stuff from the shop. If there's anything missing, they've run out of something, I can move that stuff to another shop, okay? So once I'm, I go to the other shop, I know, oh, I'm getting this and this, plus the extra thing that I didn't get from the other shop. That way you won't forget anything. So, now that you have put everything together, you know, your, your, your menu item, the ingredients, you've grouped them by um, common ingredients, 
with the quantities, by you put them by shorts. Make sure you have a checklist, okay? Don't just group them in your head. Write them down. Have a checklist, okay? And that is what you take to the shop when on that day you're off on your on, on your shopping day. That's what you take, okay? And just have be able to take them off as you shop. Okay, so have that checklist for your shopping day. So, tip number three. These are things that you will do one week or two in advance of the Christmas day. Okay? So, you've got your shopping list sorted. You need to, you know which things are perishable, like salads, the veggies, you can't really shop for them one week or two beforehand. But you know things like when you need to get yourself restock on a bag of rice, some chicken, some turkey, you know sometimes you even get some good deals like I found lamb, lamb, whole leg of lamb in the shops recently, they were going for such good deals. It, that's the time to get those in. Yes, get them in and have the good deal. So have um, shop for things that are not perishable a week or so beforehand. Okay, it will really make your life easy. Okay, I need the non-perishable items for some couple of days before Christmas. The next thing to do is to make sure your store cupboard is well stocked, okay? So have a check in your cupboard, um, your, your normal essentials, you know? You don't want to be cooking and then you find out that, oh, you forgot after the education test, test by Sunday, or you've, you've just got the tiniest bit in the container. Ah, what are you going to do? Okay, so you need to check. Give yourself some couple of days to be able to order and for it to be posted to you. Same way, all other seasonings and um, condiments that you will be serving with your dishes, you need to check that you've got them to hand. Okay? Okay. So the next thing is to prep. Prep some... Um, some cooking bases, okay? If you've been following After Village Kitchen for a while, you'll know about the Ghana Tri Plus One. Hey, this is my stress-free kitchen hack of all time. I use it every single time. With that, I love to cook, I love to cook. But coming into the kitchen to start peeling onions, peeling ginger, before I start cooking, it's not anything at all. That alone gets me out of the mood of cooking. So to help me, my number one kitchen hack is my Ghana Tribe Plus One. If you want to know how to make this, go to the website and look at the blogs. You'll find a how to process there. Okay? So basically, the Ghana Tribe Plus One is your ginger, onion, garlic and pepper blends, right? I prefer to blend them singly because depending on what the recipe is calling for, I know I've got onions on its own, I've got ginger on its own, I've got garlic on its own, and I've got pepper on its own, and it's easy for me to mix up. But feel free to make a combination of maybe ginger and onion, and, or onion and garlic. It depends on you, okay? But get these done some weeks in advance. You can freeze them, they keep really well. They keep well in the fridge for at least a week or two. If you make a big bowl, just freeze it. If you have a deep freezer, make use of it. Right, so the next thing is also simmering tomatoes. If you are Ghanaian or West African, you know that most of our 
food that's ah, tomato paste, okay? We make jollof fries with tomato paste, soups, Ghanaian soups are tomato paste, stews, your lunch is stew, your go to is stew, chicken stew, all of them are made with the tomato paste, okay? So, I will say that get your tomato salad. Um, I think yes, I have on my YouTube channel there is um, a process on how to simmer tomatoes. So easy, so so easy, and it cuts your cooking time in half. Plus, it improves improves the flavor of your your dishes. Okay, so simmer the tomatoes. If you're um, not sure about, let's say you've got my jollof, you've got my recipe book. Okay, and the jollof rice that you're going to cook says have six cans of um, whole tomatoes and what you do is just get those six cans right simmer that put everything the simmered tomatoes in a jar in a bag write six cans of tomatoes on it this is for jollof and put it in your freezer if you think you're okay with measurements and you can just you know adjust things or eyeball things just simmer a whole big pot of tomatoes i would suggest to bag them in portions so it's easier for you to you know use so do that it will save you so much time and you know you're having a less stressful time on Christmas day. So the next thing to do is you find the bargain on your meat, your your turkey. Even if you didn't find the bargain, make sure you bought some a week before. This is the time you need to buy them, okay? And this is the time to season them. So when you buy them and you get home, just get them seasoned, okay? You've made your um, ginger blends, onion blends, garlic ready. You've got your seasonings ready. Season each type of meat, chicken, fish. When you season them and you put them in the freezer, it also helps to improve flavor. It will take a week for it to, you know, all the flavors to develop. So season them and put them in your freezer and you have one more less thing to do. Now, the other thing I also suggest is if, let's say you're serving soups, even if you're not serving soup on that day, and if you are in Abuche like uh, some of us, and it is so cold, Abuche is, for the sake of those who are not Ghanaians listening to this message, um, you are abroad in um, cold places like the UK, US, Europe, it's so cold. During these festive seasons, you'll be having maybe lots of events, going out, coming back home, and it's so cold and you want something to warm you up. I would say, if you have freezer space, cook some soups and freeze them, okay? They will be so handy for when you have unannounced guests. Or oh, let's say you have a friend who just call and say, Oh, I was just passing by. It always happens. I do that all the time, okay? We, we find ourselves in a town and um, we are thinking, Oh, these people are, are here. We've got friends here. Let's just call and see if they're home and we'll pay them a visit. Yeah. And yes, if they come, sometimes they will come. You want to make them feel at home. The nice thing to do is to give them a bowl of lunch. <laughs> um, light soup, okay? Some good me light soup will do so well. Even just for you, you've come back home after visiting friends, you want something light to, to eat. So you've got your soup ready. So I'll say a week beforehand, or it can be two weeks beforehand, cook big batches of soup and store them, freeze them, they will come really handy. You know, on your Christmas day or during your festive season. Now the 
So, tip number four. Three days before Christmas. Ah, it sounds like a movie, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, planning to have a stress-free Christmas day really needs some planning and needs some work. You can't, there's work to be done. Either way, there's work to be done. But when you organize yourself so well, you can get the work done in small tasks, make yourself um, less stressed and have a bit more time to enjoy the season. So, three days before Christmas, the kind of things you can be doing. Right, so, you've done your shopping a week beforehand and you've got everything to hand. But, this is the time you get to check. Have I got everything? Check that you have everything you need in store. Everything you need to entertain, from the food to the drinks. I forget the drinks, okay? I'm more about food and I forget the drinks. So I find myself on the day and I'm like, ah, ah, I'm going to take Or, you know, you, you have your, your family likes some type of drink. So that's why you have all the time in stock. But you haven't guessed around and they may have different um, tastes and preferences. So you need to make room for that. Okay, so you need to buy a little bit out of your normal stock just to entertain them. So check that you've got that to handle. Also check your music playlist, okay? Yes, sometimes to set the mood you need to have the kind of uh, playlist that you want to be, you know, going around, jolly. And yeah, make, it, make sure you've got it to hand. It really helps because on that day you'll be so busy and you've, you've got somebody else managing your your playlist. If you don't have any playlist, they'll they'll be playing what they like. Okay, so make sure you've got your playlist sorted. And also to entertain your hosting, you want your guests to be happy and to remember the day. Have some games. So do, especially when you've got kids coming around, having games really calms them down. They have something to do instead of them running around, getting away in the kitchen. So have some games sorted. Have your kids um, organize some games that they'll play with their friends when they come around. The next thing to do is to make sure your decorations, your table setting, essentials, are in place okay they having a hosting or even even if you're not hosting it's just for the family creating the atmosphere is everything the atmosphere just add that touch so you don't need to be extravagant or you know buy expensive stuff a little bit of thought will put those little touches in place that will make it really nice and festive and memorable so yes check your decorations put them up this is three days before the time so your decorations must be up you know what you're having your table setting ideas you've got them in place you've got every little things that you want all done and gifts if you are giving your guests gifts make sure they are all ready so now you've checked that everything is ready your gifts are wrapped up ready to go on the tables or they are just ready to be given out you've checked your stock are there anything missing make sure you buy it down because this is when you're doing your last minute emergency shopping so get your emergency shopping list sorted and go shopping to make sure you get all those things that you need to fill up your stock it's also the time to buy your perishable items for your salads, your, you know, your vegetables, things that you need that go off so quickly. So three days to time is the time to do that, okay? 
and at that time too, there's less rush in the shops. So you have a stress-free time whilst in the shops because you're out there, you've left the last many people to do the last many shopping <laughs> day one before Christmas. Alright, and whilst you're shopping, don't forget to get some takeaway packs because you know some people don't just come to eat uh, and go or even that I mean people come to my house they eat and I'm like come on take, take, have some takeaways have some takeaways because one too much many takeaways will not fit in the fridge you don't want to waste food and um, I think why not just give it away you can't eat all everything you get tired of it. You don't want to be spending the next one week eating the same old thing you ate on Christmas Day. So get some takeaway packs, they really come handy. And make sure, yes, you have enough for your guests. Jingle bells chime and jingle bell time Dancing and prancing in Jingle Bell Square In the frosty air So, so, tip five Two days before Christmas Yes So, you've got, you got your gifts for your, your guests And you rock some Maybe you didn't finish um, your, your decorations, maybe you didn't finish from day three. Continue doing that, get all of that sorted. And I'll say, get your you, you know what your table setting idea is, you've got everything together. Start ironing your tablecloth if it needs to be ironed, maybe it needs to be washed. So, get it washed <laughs> day two, get it washed, ironed. And, you know, some of us buy uh, special dishes to be used on such occasions. Get them out of, of the store and, you know, wash them, clean them, get them ready for your table setting the, the day, the next day. The next thing is to clear your fridge because you're going to have loads in there. So if you don't already have from your, your shopping the day before or the lead up to Christmas, but clear the fridge from all leftovers, cooked food that you know you wouldn't be needing it anymore. Make sure you finish all of that um, by day two or day one before Christmas. Okay, so make sure your fridge is clear of such food items, cooked food. Also, make sure you get your house in order if you need to clean your house. It's really important. It gives a good impression to have your house cleaned. Get it cleaned. Create the atmosphere of you know nice, loving, good smelling house. Smelling of Christmas. Yes. So get that sorted on day two before Christmas. Okay. And it's also your chance to do some baking if you want to bake. Um, some nibbles, Ghana party chips. I've got a big version, check my blog. And um, you want to make some plantain chips also on the blog. Um, ching ching, fried or baked, anything, those kind of nibbles that you can you can um, do beforehand. I'll say get it done on day two. It actually fills the air with the festive smells. Okay, so it will be a good idea to get that done and uh, get that out of the way. Tip six. Ah, you're getting close. Day one before Christmas. Yes. So day one before Christmas. Hmm. 
don't get too nervous. No, you've done so much. Pre prepped, planned, organized, cleaned, shopped. So yeah, you you are in a good place, okay? Don't need to panic or start stressing. You are in a good position to have a stress-free Christmas day. So yes, let's do the last prep. What you can be doing to on, on day one before Christmas is to take your seasoned meats, chicken, turkey, whatever you season, out of the freezer and into the fridge so that it starts to defrost for your cooking on Christmas day. Also make sauces, dips, your canapes, if you're doing lots of canapes, you can prep most of them. So get them prepped. Cut up your vegetables, everything. If you're making fried rice, make sure your vegetables are cut up. Make use of extra hands you have around the house. Get them to do this and refrigerate them, okay? So the next thing is also to, um, let's say you're making jello fries, okay? You can, or something that, your stews, you can make your stews. You've got goat meat stew, chicken stew, you can make your stews the day before. Yes, some of them, the taste improves with the day, okay? Within the day, the taste is even much better. You don't need to wake up on Christmas Day, that's what you're making your, your stew for your jollof or your chicken stew or your goat meat stew. So, prep the base. Prep the base, remember, you've got your Ghana Triad plus one. You've got your tomato cement. Mm -hmm. So, it's all about putting everything together and you can get your jello base stew sorted. Ready for your rice the next day on Christmas Day. Right, so now um, I'll say also the next thing to do is to set your table. Yes, I have, I always do this, when I'm having um, events at home or um, Christmas dinners or any kind of party, I always set my table the day before. Why do I do this? I do this because you find that on that day you are in the kitchen trying to get everything ready, heated up and onto the table and you have, you have guests around and say oh what can we do to help and you say oh put this on the table you just have them the soup and they go they pour it in the the dish that you were going to serve with your salad and you're like mm -hmm. <laughs> no i didn't want that to happen you know that is number one stress it does for me it stresses me okay it, it, it doesn't give me the whole kind of look that I have in mind. So, I will say set the table. Set the table um, and label the dishes, the serving dishes. Okay, so you have a bowl for your fruit salad. Put fruit salad, okay? So, for people who come, your guests come and they want to give you a hand, they know fruit salad goes in this table. And when your guests are serving themselves, they, need, they don't need to ask you, oh, what's this? Okay, they know it's fruit salad. So set the table with all the dishes, empty, cleaned, um, table decorated nicely, and label them. It's here, okay? We're all excited. Give yourself enough time to prep, okay? So if you need to wake up early enough, but not too early, um, give yourself enough time. When you wake up, fill the air with aromatic smells using scented candles or I'll be bringing you some um, simmering potpourri ideas. You can have different flavors with your profiles going on in the day from breakfast smells to, you know, the kind of Christmas smells. So get that um, started so that you are relaxed and you are in the mood. 
sort out some breakfast for yourself and the family, make sure you are full enough to take you out to Christmas dinner. Whilst you're prepping breakfast, get your uh, meats that you're going to grill or bake out of the fridge so that it comes to room temperature. Get them out of the fridge, get your oven on because if you're roasting a big turkey, it's going to take some good couple of hours. So get it out of the, the fridge during the breakfast prep time and get your oven on and start baking. Baking your meats, your chicken, your turkeys. Okay? And um, the next thing after breakfast, just after breakfast, just clear up. Clear up nicely. Get people to help you to um, clear up if you've got people around, your children. Get them to help to clear up the, um, after breakfast. And after that, I'll say start cooking your jello fries. You've already cooked your stew base waiting. Get it on the fire, right? And add in your rice and get it cooking. Um, I'll say start your, your fried rice as well. If you're making fried rice, things that you can get done um, in this time, get done your chicken or turkeys in the oven. You're making your chili, your chili of rice is cooking. You're boiling potatoes for your potato salad. Um, what else? You prepped your salads the day before, your dips are ready, your canopies are ready. So you're almost done, isn't it? You're almost done. It is much less stressful. If you can't remember everything, okay, I would say have a checklist of the things you need to get prepped, okay, or you need to get yeah, you need to get done for for the for for dinner, Christmas dinner to be ready. Have a checklist and just take it off, okay. By now, at this time of the Christmas day, you should have almost everything in place. So um, get the finger foods out in your stations, get the music going, get the table set with the dips and sauces and stuff like that can go on the table, okay? So you have much less things to actually get onto the table when your guests arrive. Right, so now that you've got all that sorted, give yourself time, enough time to be able to go get ready, get yourself all dolled up and ready to receive your guests. You don't want your guests to come and find you in your uh, pages. Maybe it may look nice, but you, know, you don't want them to come and see you in pages. So give yourself enough time to get changed and dressed up before your guests arrive. Then you've got the music flowing so the air is filled with Christmas and you're feeling relaxed and ready to party. Alright, I hope these Christmas um, tips, I mean these handy tips will help you have a stress-free Christmas and feel free, feel free to leave comments um, here on my youtube channel under this video let me know how you get on give me feedback if you put these tips in place how did you find it if you really enjoy if you try any of my recipes i'd love to hear from you i'd love to hear what your guests said about the recipes or the spices if you've been using the spices my shit or all of that um i'm sure they'll love it if they don't love it, I'll have to hear so that I can improve and give you the best. If you haven't got my book fruits, ready mix, I don't know what you're waiting for. Come on, that could be a Christmas morning breakfast and, or some snacks or desserts after your Christmas dinner. But 
But anyway, I'd love to hear from you. So leave a comment and I wish you a very Merry Christmas and a very happy and prosperous New Year. Thank you so much for following After the Village, for your support, buying the, the items and constant encouraging words. It's been such a fantastic year. Um, don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends and family. Bye bye. Love you all. Snowing and blowing the bushels of fun. Now the jingle hop has begun. Jingle bell, jingle.